2.6, the limit from the right of 2.6, and the limit from either side. I have to locate 2.6. Here is 2.6, roughly. What is the limit from the left of 2.6? Perfect. What is the limit from the right of 2.6? Perfect. What is the limit from either side of 2.46? 1.42. Now I want to make one up. What about the limit from the left of 1? What about the limit from the right of 1? 1.31. Perfect. What, ab what about the limit from either side of 1? One? 1 does not exist. Does not exist because the left and the right don't go to the same number. Great. Is that clear? OK, I would like to graph another piecewise defined function. Because you see how important this is. It appears again. We, we did this in chapter R, but let's do one more. Maybe, maybe now it, it's going to be better for you to understand or easier to understand if you see it again, the method that I highly recommend. Let's say 77, we have age of x equals x plus 1, x less than 0, 2 between 0 and 1, not 1 and 3 minus x for x greater than or equal to 1. So we are looking at limit. And you see, I, I hope you're going to appreciate the table now better than before. x approaches 1. OK, let me stop sharing. Perfect. So forgive me, I'm going to mute you uh, so we don't have any background noise. So please unmute yourselves anytime you want to say something. So. Can anyone refresh our memory? What do we do when we are asked to graph a piecewise defined function, or any function for that matter? What do we need to do first, determine first? Domain. Yes, thank you very much. I know I sound like a broken record. I, I got it. OK, so first we change this into an interval notation. Can anyone give us the interval notation for this? Would it be zero to infinity? Careful, it be? says it says less. Oh, oh, my fault. No worries. Negative infinity to zero. Yes, with a parenthesis or bracket. That's the key point. Here. With a parenthesis. Awesome. Now, can anyone give us this? Negative infinity to zero. Oh, we have six, we have to read what we see here going to be 0 to 1? Yes. 0 to 1, which one is what? Brackets and then parentheses. This oh. one has the equal symbol. Very good. A bracket here, but there is no, per, no equal symbol here because it's here. Good. Awesome. Finally, the last one. I love it when you are involved and answer. Even if you're wrong, it's OK. Negative. Oh. So what do I write? 1 to infinity. With a bracket. OK, perfect. Now, can anyone establish the domain for us? Negative infinity to positive infinity. Nothing is missing. Awesome. Thank you, Sierra. So nothing is missing. From negative infinity to 0, I have 0 to 1. I have 1 to infinity. But as you know, these are key numbers. So I have to have 0 and I have to have 1. Please notice again what I do, because this is so easy to understand. At some point in time, if you do understand it, it's awesome. Parenthesis to the left, bracket to the right. Exactly under 0. Not skewed. Exactly under 0. The same thing under 1. I have a parenthesis to the left and the bracket to the right, and they're touching exactly under 1. What is the significance of this in, again? This 
will be the full. This will be the full because it's a bracket. This will be the open. This will be the open because it's a parenthesis. Yes, you may say this is redundant and I will not argue with you. But I want to put them here in the correct order because these may be scrambled up and I may make a mistake between negative infinity and 0, x plus 1. Between 0 and 1, 2. Between 1 and infinity, 3 minus x. So I don't have to look up here. It's very clear now. In x plus 1, it's a linear function, linear function, linear function. I need two points for each branch. Let's say, and this is very important, right? x plus 1 equals 0 means x equals negative 1. So it's very important because it's an x-intercept. OK? Then I plug in 0, and I get 1. Inside the parentheses, 1. I plug in 0. Who cares? I plug in 1. Who cares? There's just nothing else but 2. I plug in 1. 2 inside. And of course, I'm looking for 3 minus x equals 0, which means x equals 3. Super important because it's the x-intercept. OK, so let's see what we get. At this point, before I even, if you understand this table, which I think it's not difficult, if you rewatch the video, please, I can already answer this and this from the table. What does this say? Limit from the left and right from either side of 0. What will you say? Because this is where the function values are going. How will you answer this without even graphing it? Does not exist. Exactly. Thank you very much. Who said that? Slow. Thank you. Because the, the limit from the left obviously is 1, and the limit from the right obviously is 2. Can anyone else give us the answer for the limit as x approaches 1 from either side? Two. That's it. I don't even care for the graph, but they are asking me to graph, so I will graph. But the table itself, once you understand it, you already have the answers for that. Good. So the first, I will use, as you know, three colors just because I want everyone to remember that they cannot overlap. If you graph something like this, that's not a function. Each piece has its color. OK, I'll start with green. Negative 1 for x, 0 for y. 0 for x, 1 for y. Open. Done with green. Red. 0, 2. Full point. 1, 2. Not a full point. Open. Done with red. 1, 2. I have to fill it in. And 3, 0. See, they do not overlap. I don't have something like this. There will not be a function. By the vertical line test, every vertical line crosses the function in only one point. So we already answered. As x approaches 0 from either side, the t trend with green is 1. And the trend with red is 2. That's why when x approaches 0 from either side, there is DNE here. However, for 1, as x approaches 1 from the left and from the right simultaneously, the function values get closer and closer, closer and closer to 2, as we saw it here already. 
Okay, I know I talk too much. Any questions for me? So this is how we address limits um, from graphs. Graphing, for example, if we didn't have the graph, and from the given graph, as we just looked at the, um, um, at the book. Okay, now, uh, moving on, which page am I on for? So in 1.2, we're still looking at limits and also something called continuity. I'll get to continuity later, but this is, I'm, I'm going to write it anyway. And you're going to say, what is continuity in a minute? But I want to talk about limits algebraically. So we are not given the graph. We have to do some algebra to determine the limits. So page 124, I'm going to share my screen. Stop me anytime if you have questions, please. Uh, 124, 124, enter. OK. So allow me to choose first. And um, I'm going to choose from polynomial functions. And then I'm going to choose from rational functions. And then the, the, uh, the floor is open to you to choose. OK, so I'm going to start with um, 13 and page 124. And then I'll let you choose the next one. So we have limit. As x approaches 3 from either side, from x squared minus 4x plus 7. OK. As you see here, can anyone identify, forget about the limit for a moment, can anyone identify what type of function is this? Quadratic? Yes. Excellent. Polynomial in general. Specifically quadratic. Very good. Who was that? Thank you. Excellent. Good. Now, every time we determine limits of polynomial functions, limits, that's our note, limits of polynomial functions, oops, here's the rule, the limit of a function which is polynomial, as x approaches a number, all we have to do is plug it in. Plug it in. What it? A. So I have a limit of a polynomial function. In order to determine the limit, remember what this limit is saying. Tell me where this function is going if x approaches 3 from either side. It does not say find the function value. But it happens that we can determine the limit by plugging it in. So a few minutes ago I said, this is not the function value. This is, this is saying when x approaches a number from either side or left or right, find the tendency. So I just said that they're not the same. It happens that for polynomial functions and other situations, they are the same. But in general, they're not. This says find the function value. And this one says, give me the trend. Where is this function going? What is the number that it's approaching when x approaches a? So can anyone give us the answer for this? <clears throat> Six. I was just sipping a <clears throat> water. I have no idea. So 9 minus 12 plus 7. Am I correct? So that's, right. that's OK. I, I make mistakes too. So 16 minus 12, I got 4. Oh my god, what the fuck? Rakita, are you OK? My math is off. I'm sorry. Are you OK? I'm okay. But do you have a question? Why, why don't you ask me? You, you may no, help. No, I just, I just got the, I just did the math wrong. 
I that's a, that's okay. I uh, maybe I did it wrong. So let me let me check. So three squared is nine. Negative four times three, negative twelve plus seven. Nine plus seven. I do the positives first. Sixteen. Sixteen minus twelve is four. Is that correct? Yes. Perfect. Let's go on. If you feel like choosing another before we look at rational ones. Do we need to choose another polynomial? Anything from 9 through 16, they're all the same. If you need to see another, let me know. Let's do 16. Let's do 16. Very good. So in 16, since it's a polynomial, we have limit. Sx approaches negative 1, 3x to the fifth plus 4x to the fourth minus 3x plus 6. Can anyone give us um, the answer here? I see a negative 3. I see a positive 4. I see a positive 3. And I see a positive 6. The negative 3 with positive 6 and 4 plus 6, I got 10. Is 10 okay? No, how did you do that? Negative 1 to the fifth power. So I, I'm using the rule that we just discussed. That's exactly what we did here. We plugged in 3. The limit is f of 3. 9 negative 4 times 3 plus 7. 9 plus 7, 16, minus 12 is 4. Negative 1 to the fifth power is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. Negative 1 to the fourth is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 3 times negative 1, I get positive 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, and 4 plus 6 is 10. Is everyone okay with this? Yes. 